is BYOT. Bring your own tacos. Dick swinging. Dick swinging. You're listening to American Slacker Podcast. We can say fuck. Say fuck. With Matthew Gertz and Jesse Landers. I don't care. I've been smoking. This is cool. That's a decent amount of sausage. This man needs what? a doctor. Yeah. I just hope they're tasty. What's up with these clowns, man? Cut the lights and went through people's pockets. Don't you point that at each other. Let them smoke a little. You need to like step it up to that point. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not gonna lead with the. We're not gonna lead. Uh, <laughs> All right, this is episode 99. This is the last of the double digits. Last of the double digits, man. And we've talked about it over and over again. It feels crazy every so often we get to these periods, you know, the numbers in the show. Little mile markers. Man, did you, how, did you imagine episode 100 when we, we started this? When you talked me into this madness that is American Slacker <laughs> Podcast. Did you ever imagine episode 100, especially reaching us so quickly? Well, so quickly, no. I will say, though, when we came up with our naming convention for the episodes, I debated if we were doing two digits or three digits because it's like always mm. been zero, three, four for like episode yes. 34. Um, so I had a little bit of forethought that maybe we'd make it to that point. So now we can stop, right? Isn't that what it's? Yeah. It's all yeah, about yeah, we hit it. It's now over. We're, it's we're, over. We're One more episode people. and that's we're it. done. We wipe our hands clean and that's and it. Finally. Walk away. No. <laughs> walk no, away. It's the start of much more, I would say. We actually have a lot of big changes that are hopefully going to be coming to the show as we roll into episode 100. We'll mention a lot of them on that show. Yeah, we don't want to give away too much right now. That's the fun of the anticipation that we're trying to linger in front of you, like a fishing lure. A little, and, uh, little carrot on a stick for him. Uh, you're you're the cat, and we got the little pole, and we're dangling it. All right. <laughs> um, there's a lot coming in the future, and uh, we're really excited to lay it down on you. And uh, yeah, just definitely tune in to episode 100 and especially i think the pre-show because we're going to be doing a lot of giveaways yeah it's probably going to be a little bit longer of a pre-show because we have a bunch of things to give away including two digital copies of the original state of decay game for xbox one i believe or it might yes. be backwards compatible i'm not sure um yeah <laughs> also a stash jar from 420 science uh Ooh, it's s- nice some it's stickers nice. oh yeah it's really nice i want to keep it for myself but we're giving it away to you um and some stickers from the show you can also win they will be posting up uh some posts on instagram throughout the week that you know you'll be able to enter uh the giveaway with by liking it tagging people that sort of thing so be sure to keep an eye on our instagram this week that's going to be a big you know driver for the uh 100 big 100 show on june 16th which is a saturday at 3 p.m eastern which is noon pacific if you're on my coast yes yeah it fucking be there or be square motherfucker it's gonna be be around it's gonna be a lot of fun and uh this is all occurring on the instagram that's the easiest way to get to us and uh yeah man a lot of good shit to give away we're really hyped a lot of talking about the new shit for the show yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun it's gonna be a lot of fun but uh now let's get into episode 99 welcome to american slack podcast and as always i'm matt and i'm jesse and uh yeah we're fucking excited as you can tell now we got a lot coming on in the show but first i think we got a pod shout out yes we do we have a decent amount of retweets this time matt Okay. All right. Late on me. How many we're we dealing with now? What are we dealing with? We got a lot. I know last time we had in the 40s. We better yep. maintain that. We're up there again. We're in. We're at 43. 43. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna go with 28. Discovery right. Channel's channel when I was a kid. That's the amount of uh, grams in an ounce of weed. Oh, okay. Let's go with that. Okay. Let's go I with see, that. I see your reasoning. Um, yeah. Number 28 on our list of retweets is at Giant Leap, the number four, Geeks. And this is one okay. Giant Leap for Geeks. Huh. Okay. Now, what is this, the premise of this podcast? They, each week, they give our, their comedic take on all things geek culture from movies, games, anime, TV shows, comics, and more. And you can listen oh. to their episodes. They're based out of Michigan. Ooh, okay, okay, middle America nerds. All right. You know, 
they probably put out some good stuff looking at some of their tweets here awesome yeah definitely worthy of checking out we uh, definitely support we support any nerd or geek podcasts and uh check those check these guys out i'm sure some of our listeners would enjoy them so yeah get at them at at giant leap four geeks and that's the number four congrats okay. guys giant leap four geeks check them out so what do we got coming up in today's show matt well as always we're gonna start out with our bizarre news which keeps you guys coming you know that's why you're here you know it and uh today's lesson of the news is to watch out for the old men on the golf course Uh jesus christ we're gonna get there then we're gonna move into something a little more easy a little more relaxed and we're gonna do a video game segment we got xbox gaming and uh then we're gonna finish it out we've got the wheel of weird coming back and we've got quite the selection of weird shit so we'll see where it lands when we get there people have given that a spin so now before we get into all that we always like to start our weird news with a little bit of weed news last time in our in our previous episode we talked about marijuana and working out and we're kind of running in that Mm -hmm. same uh vein if you will or strain if you will uh, okay. Because we're talking this time about weed yoga classes in Las Vegas. Now, how does this work? Do you toke before you, you you do it, or like how's that work? Like it seems like you can toke before, during, and after is uh, hmm. how they're explaining it here. There's a number of different uh, yoga places that are offering you know weed sessions where you can smoke a little bit before you go into your downward dog see that's awesome man and i've got to say i I, I believe i talked about it on air last time but like when i used to do crossfit i uh did crossfit non-smoking and smoking and i've got to say once i started smoking before i went felt a total different form of concentration and in being able to keep my steadiness in my moves I've got to say, I understand that's 100%. Yeah, and I could see psychologically and physically how it could be Mm -hmm. beneficial. Um, You might feel a little bit more loose and not as stiff if you've, uh, you know, been able to smoke. So maybe you can, like, push those positions a little bit further, get into that warrior pose. And uh, Canada Yoga in Las Vegas Valley has, you know, started up these classes. And they've seen their class sizes uh, increase, I think they said, uh, Four, they they have 40 sessions and now it's packed with 10 students for each class and so they Where, doubled their total number was this in um la i'm sorry i didn't catch location uh, this was las vegas in las vegas vegas LA. Ooh, man yeah. they moved quick with them legalizing just like in the last year and they're already going hard like that Oof. yeah they're they're I, all I like for it. it and it seems like everyone from you know um people uh who are veterans with ptsd to people with um simple back injuries are able to go in do a little bit of stretching and uh do a little bit of toking so that they can feel feel better when they end up walking out that's awesome it's a available for individuals who are above 21 and Mm -hmm. for a fee of 25 dollars nice bring your own herbs <laughs> yeah i'm guessing that 25 don't expect that bugs. 25 is going to cover you to get to another galaxy all right right that's not <laughs> they're probably not going to cover that i would i would like to do a weed yoga class that'd be awesome. i would do it maybe uh one day in the future we'll have to figure this out and uh do something like do that do a little that's weed cool. retreat up into the mountains yeah. Oh man, weed yoga, Tahoe, man. weed yoga. Oh <laughs> man, I'm down with it. Maybe Washington or Oregon. That'd be I cool. Feel like, yeah, yeah. So That'd if you want to read a little bit more about weed yoga, we'll be posting this article from leafedin.org on our Facebook page on Monday, like we do every week with our weed articles. Definitely check it out. And uh, our next story definitely features some men that could use some weed yoga, I believe. What we have here is um, we had a young gentleman who was just trying to play a one-man game of golf. He was on the course enjoying the day. Maybe that's his yoga. Maybe okay. he's relaxing, just enjoying the day, putting a little, you know, whatever. Well, you know, sometimes it doesn't go so well and you got to play through and it takes, you know, a little bit for you to finish up at the hole while you got people waiting on you. And, uh, uh, the pressure. You know. You know, the pressure is real. You know, they might say, hey, we're in no rush. But, you know, you're still going to be like, shit, I'm holding these guys up. Yep. Well, you know, this gentleman decided to, you know, just warn the guys, say, hey, you know, I want to play through. It might take me a minute, you know. 
So he warned a group of four. And uh, one of the men had said, hey, I work at this golf course. Like, trying to strut his shit, you know, put his balls out on presentation. And, uh, as long as you know, he watched him first. Apparently the guy didn't care. You know, he, he was like, well, I, I paid to play. Like, you should know that. You work here. Like, you would figure that would be even more understandable. Right. Well, it was at that point that it escalated to the point that uh, the man was starting to get hit in the head with a putter. Oh, shit. On top of the head, in front of the head, and uh, things got worse when <laughs> another man of that foursome, a 72-year-old, decided to join in and uh, start kicking the victim in his buttocks and legs. Could, he couldn't resist himself. He had to ju- get in there and start jumping him, too, huh? It's a gang mentality, I guess, you know? It's just like you see somebody's fucking somebody up, you gotta join in there and add your salt and pepper. <laughs> I mean, they're spry. They're out there golfing. Jesus, man. But the 72 year. Can you imagine being 72 year old and like throwing down? Like, like Bob I, just, Barker I can't imagine. And, uh, and Happy oh, Gilmore? My, ha- yeah, dude. Actually, that's a good comparison. Yeah. The price is wrong, bitch. Pretty much that in real life. Man. Yeah. Except you yeah, got like really four is. Bob Barkers. Unfortunately for this guy, it wasn't so comedic when uh, the recovery. He had to get three staples and ten stitches in his head. Ooh. And and you know, all of course the uh, suspects are claiming that the victim initiated the attack. But Jesus Christ, he started. I mean, it. the damage kind of says otherwise. <laughs> yeah, getting when you have a golf club, you're definitely like the one in charge Dude. of that situation. That's like a zombie game. You're hitting somebody with a, a fucking golf club. Like I just couldn't imagine. Like it is like a zombie. I feel game. like, I feel like, as even though a baseball bat's a little like thicker, I feel like I'd rather hit somebody with a baseball bat than a golf club because that thing would just fucking kill them. Yeah, the metal on the end of it. It's like a, it's like Ooh. a paperweight on a fucking rod. <laughs> yeah, if it's putter, it's sharp. Like damn. So I guess don't ask to play through. That might be the. Uh, no. The last well, year. I'm not a big golfer myself. Me neither. Besides mini the golf. article recommends maybe hitting a few uh, test shots at the, you know, the driving range before you go out to avoid this. Was anyone arrested in this? Ah, uh, not that I could see. It's being investigated though. Mm. The they let, they let them off with a warning. It's like, ah, oh, you old people. You old men. You get away with it this bastards. time. Well, the uh, man in our next story wasn't so lucky. He ended up being caught after two years of antics. Of clogging women's room toilets. Ah, just the women's room. He's targeting the women. Yeah, he's he's going after the ladies for some reason. I, I'm guessing uh-huh. it's because he's like, I well, I have to use the men's bathroom. It's like you. I was wondering. Break. I was like, is it a vendetta against ladies? Is it so like maybe they'll think it's a lady instead of a male, and he's a male? Who knows? You know, that's a weird. Maybe the uh, the reason they ended up catching this guy was because of a citizen that tipped them off, saying like I saw someone, you know, leaving. But for two years, in Sheb- uh, near Sheboygan, Wisconsin, this area had Sheboygan, was- Sheboygan, 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 Wisconsin. You, you gotta love saying Sheboygan. Um, if we have any listeners from Sheboygan, hit us up on the Facebook page. You get stickers immediately. You get I'm stickers. <laughs> So, this man was at Delland Park for two years, uh, you know, shoving plastic bottles into the toilets to the point where it blocked them up with no way for ways to escape, and they had to even replace some of these toilets. It caused $3,000 in in, uh, damage to fix the toilet, or, well, to the toilets, which you needed fixing. That's crazy. That's ridiculous. So he's just fucking cramming cans and bottles down the fucking yeah. toilet somehow. And uh, I feel like you'd them. have to be some kind of plumber to come up with that. Like maybe I'm just dumb when it comes to it, but like that seems like something you, an industry thing you know. It's like, yeah, if you want to fuck up a toilet, shove like a plastic bottle, an empty bottle. I don't know. That. It just seems like an asshole. It's like, I bet this doesn't belong down there. Just, I guess, ah! yeah, it's probably easy to just shove shit in a toilet until it stops working. Yeah, I think you're over. This guy's a mastermind. Piece of shit. Yeah, you're making him some kind of mastermind when he's really just a dipshit shoving his soda cans down the fucking toilet. Yeah, it seems that way. He, That's all he had, man. That's all he had. Yeah, the 33-year-old Sheboygan man was uh, arrested for the string of vandalism over the past two years. Man. Well, you know, hopefully this is the last of him ruining 
It's gonna be under these toilets. Yeah, no That's... one's no one's gonna be able to shit in Sheboygan if, uh, if this, this guy was let out on the street. Serial cloggers running around. You're gonna have to go outside and find a and dig a hole or something. God. Right. Somebody call the goddamn cops. <laughs> Alright, that's all I'm saying. And, uh, you gotta be careful. You, you might want to get a badge and, and really check the, uh, credits of those cops when they show up. Because our next story coming out of Flint, Michigan. It's quite crazy. Because apparently, a group of wannabe cops has been fooling even police for the last decade across Genesee County. And, uh, they've been showing up at, you know, anything from house fires to... Any other general crime scene they can get into real quick. And at some occasions, it's believed they were the first responders. Which is even better, because they get to lay down the ground. <laughs> Showing up on the scene with their toy, with Toys R Us badge. <laughs> Man, yeah. And uh, even arresting people. One of the occasions resulted in um, from a witness saying that they were put in handcuffs. Their license was taken, and uh, their info was entered into a laptop inside of a car, and then they were unhandcuffed and said they were placed on a criminal watch list. They just blocked them on Facebook. That's all yeah. that they were doing. Yeah, that yeah, laptop. yeah you like, know <laughs> it. They were like, let me find these motherfuckers on like, Facebook. Uh, I don't know. The there's too many Johns. I don't know which one he is. Uh, hey, did you grow up in uh, South <laughs> Did you ever okay. work at Dairy Queen? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, you're clear. Really up. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know they've showed up at house fires, all kinds of uh, crashes, and now the police finally caught wind that this is like some kind of fake fucking incident going on. Now, let me just give you the name where you should have got the first hint that they, maybe they weren't legit. We're talking. These guys showed up calling themselves the Genesee County Fire and EMS Media Genesee County Task Force Bright Blight agency uh, okay wait that's the whole thing all name. that all that and there's <laughs> genesee twice in that and i've seen this in multiple articles that's why i don't get maybe i'm fucking it up maybe it is split in two with you know genesee county task force blight agency and genesee county fire and ems media i maybe it's split there but either way that's ridiculous yeah that's uh, it's probably because of how long that the agency was that there people were just like okay i I lost you halfway through, so... I'm just gonna... Yeah, I'm just gonna say, like, us, like, when we were kids, if somebody tried to, like, put us in cups, and they were like, hey, this is the Genesee County Task Force Blight Agency, we'd be like, let me see that fucking badge, asshole. <laughs> you like At 17, we would've still been like, hmm, I've never heard of this. Yeah, it sounds like bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, this this seems loosely uh, based off of the movie, the 2014 movie, Let's Be Cops. Where dudes just bought a, a cruiser and ended up, uh, you know, getting officers' uniforms from, like, a costume shop or something. Yeah, man. Um, you know, it's crazy to see that this actually worked for so long. For and that's years. scary, too. You know, people it actually probably scary. needed help from time to time. And these yeah. clowns just showed up in their fucking yeah. Chuck E. Cheese uniforms. And we're talking like they were lingering in parks after dark hitting people with trespassing charges and <laughs> shit. Like, well, so, what like, happens when you go to the court and they don't have any record of this shit? They always, it was always like a release incident. So it was like, you know, like we're letting you off with a warning, motherfucker. <laughs> but if we see you again, it's put in the records that you have been trespassing at this park. We're gonna get you double. You know, like it was just like I, I don't know. What is the obsession? Do you think it was just like they got off on an authority, being an authority figure type Yeah, they're probably stealing people's food and shit. Be like, I'm taking Maybe, that right? hot dog and you Looking need to for get the fuck out of here. Yeah, taking their weed. You know, like, what do you got mm. on you? And then they search <laughs> you and they fucking just run your pockets. Like, that's fucked you got up. A free half. You're like, you, hell and yeah. And you can't do anything because they're using their fake authority. You think they're a park ranger, but nope. Right? Part of the Blight Task uh, Force. It's like, They're fuck. fucking Deputy Dewey from fucking uh, Scream or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, be careful out there, people, and uh, always request numbers. a double form of uh, identification. Right. <laughs> well, we're headed over to a fight that happened in Union Parish, Louisiana. <laughs> and this uh, fight ended up with someone uh, getting arrested. Okay. The real cop showed up to this one, let's say. <laughs> okay. And hmm. what could this fight possibly have been over? 
Well, who's over those tasty little things that we like to call Vienna sauce? Oh, man. I, yeah, I don't even know Like if I've even enjoyed a Vienna sausage. Really? Like, is it what, what is it that makes it a Vienna? Do we know? Or? You are getting sent a can of Vienna sausages with the hot a ramen. A can right of there. sausage yeah. you lost me right away, and I just don't want you to waste no, your money. I'm they're scared. Like, they're like um, little hot dogs, kind of, but you can eat them cold. Nope, not doing it. You know what they're perfect for? Those are the perfect, like, uh, prepper food. Like, if you want to, like, prepare that's for the, only the time apocalypse, I would eat that's, it's like, your perfect End time. of times, I would eat that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Same as All sardines. Day. I put that, that with sardines. Be, that would be luxury in the apocalypse. Of the yeah, true. Sausages. Even sardines would be. Like, they're apparently, like, a great combo of oil and protein. That's actually, yeah. I would say Vienna sausage is right in that same line as, like, sardine kind of meat. Okay. Okay. All right. So, now that I've... I've boosted the morale uh, on the side of Vienna sausages here. We can all understand why someone would end up getting possibly stabbed over them. A, uh, <laughs> a man, an argument broke out over the Vienna sausages and landed a man in the Union Parish Detention Center. The 58-year-old was booked on June 2nd and charged with aggravated second-degree battery with a bond set at $25,000. Jesus. I guess the man's neighbor, a woman, wanted a Vienna sausage, and he refused to give her one. Okay. Taylor said the woman hit him between the eyes so hard that it nearly knocked him out of his electric wheelchair. So, <laughs> so Barry in the lead there. Uh, this dude, wheel, dude in the wheelchair is getting punched in the face over Vienna sausages. <laughs> Okay, so somebody really wanted the sausage. Oh, yeah. And, and it, like, so the guy in the wheelchair had the sausages, and, like, the lady was like, oh, I'm having them sausages. Yeah, his neighbor, she, like, busts in, like, Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. She smelled the sausages, and she busted in and was like, hey, I want. <laughs> he then got nervous and pulled out a knife, and he said he did not stab the lady, but... She did have a cut on the side of her nose that he said came from when she lunged at him, causing the knife to cut her. It's like, she stabbed herself, apparently, is what he's going with. Anybody would lunge at a, a knife eye first. Yeah. You know, <laughs> naturally, like, over a sausage. We all we all know the classic face block on a knife. Like, that's what, yeah. <laughs> what you want to yeah. pull. Your eye is hard as a diamond. Used to. So then we get a non-biased version of this. A witness of the scene said that the woman did nearly knock him out of his chair and stated that he did open a knife and possibly cut the victim. But as far as him not having any marks from the being punched in the face, it wasn't maybe it wasn't that of a heart that hard of a blow. The witness stated, you know how we roll, we're old school. Oh shit. Laying down the old school, huh? That's how, how it goes in Louisiana, man. Oh man. You're gonna get cut for your sausages. You get cut for them canned sausages. <laughs> you get cut for them. So you're gonna you're gonna get a little uh, tasty can of Vienna sausages along with that ramen and and all kinds of. Can other I shit. put them in the ramen, the spicy ramen to yeah. mollify the spice? I mean, you can, but you're just gonna ruin the Vienna sausages. <laughs> Will I ruin or maybe make the so the hotness a little less? It's I don't like know. lava. It's just like the ramen just takes over I put, everything. I put the sausage in there and it disintegrates. And I'm like, oh my god, what do I do? <laughs> it's like that's what's gonna happen to your insides. Jesus. Well, yeah, that's another thing for you guys to look forward to. We're gonna do the hot ramen challenge live on one of the pre-shows, so keep an eye out for that. I am definitely looking forward to that. That's good. We got the video up and running now, so we can watch oh, our, yeah. our are you? and pain. Oh, like you're that. so glad, aren't you, that I I can turn into this horrible shade of red on the the pre-show. Are you one of those people that starts sneezing real bad? If, you, if I don't, I don't stuff? sneeze, but I might throw up or something. I don't know. <laughs> we'll get a see. bucket. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, in our next story, let's move back. Let's go to Canada. Let's go to Canada in our next story. And uh, we're talking about a lovely spring day. And this is all occurring back in May 9th. And uh, man, you know, I've got to say, I've, just, I've been enjoying the spring days myself. Cracking the sunroof in the car. You can't help but enjoy it. Finally, we battled winter. We I made it, right? Ah, oh, man, yeah, it's it's fun. You live life, you live, hair is flying in the wind, all that fun <laughs> stuff. But man, that's not exactly the tale that happened to a woman in Kelowna, Canada, and uh, 
her and her son were enjoying the spring day, and then all of a sudden, through that sunroof, a nasty slush of sewage Ugh. and chemicals came flying down on her car, Ooh. covering her and her son, her 21-year-old son. That's so, terrible. And this disgusting, gross mess. That yeah, there would be vomit in that started, car also if it was me. Her son immediately started vomiting. Oh, there he you go. just was blowing chunks all over the joint. I'm imagining this is a 1996 Camaro with a T-top sunroof. Chunks are being blown all over. Leonard Skinner is playing. It's craziness. Can't hold on to the wheel. It's covered in fucking shit. Oh, my God. And that's where it leads us to a car wash after it, where she decides that she needs to hose her son, herself, and the car down. She needed to burn to that whole car. <laughs> burn it. Let it match. Just fucking deal with this. Head, head on. <laughs> Well, apparently, you know, down the road, she ended up contacting, what is that? Conjunctivitis? Conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis. Get yeah. old pink skin AKA guy. Pink guy. Yeah. She can. De- she got the pink eye from, from a plane dropping shit somehow accidentally, and it conveniently landing on, his car, on her car, oh. hitting her and her son. What are the odds of this? She looked up and got it on her face. That's uh, it, They were probably covered. Ah, oh, man. They were covered, and apparently she isn't the only victim of this turd bombing. Another man in Kelowna also found his car covered in feces. Oh, no. And we can only imagine how many other people actually were covered Poo-bomb. by this shit. Now, it's being looked into. There's an investigation, and uh, it was right near the airport. So, most likely, it was a passing plane you know, taking off or landing okay. with some kind of malfunction, letting the tanks go midair. Oh, that's terrible. Like, I can't believe they don't have this, like, figured out by now, that they're not, like, raining uh, shit on people. Man, yeah, just, at least it didn't, like, freeze and just, like, a, a block of frozen shit, like, murdered somebody in a Holy fuck, in a I didn't even think of that. That's my biggest worry, is, like, a frozen block of something just coming down, like, bah! That's a bad way bah! to go. Dude, I don't want to go that way. No, a hell no. Explosion? I don't want to be the guy that, dude, got killed by a shit sickle Shit knife. meteor? Shit meteor. That's probably, yeah, that's it. A shit meteor. It's a yeah. shit meteor. I don't want to be, I don't want to go down shit meteor. No. Fuck no. No. Does. no. You got to blow that no. shit, that shit up. Like in, uh, what was it? Armageddon or something? Oh my God. Sending a, uh, a missile to, to break it up. With Steven a missile. Tyler that people are driving i don't understand why couldn't we just ai there must have been some robotic force to <laughs> we weren't use at, that at that point time. yet i guess jesus christ send in bruce willis Fuck. well uh Ooh. travel is a bitch especially when you're raining shit on people but uh it's also a bitch when you're trying to smuggle things and you get caught ah uh, it is it is you gotta be careful we have Your we've father. seen some weird ways of smuggling things we've done some past stories about people putting gold up their butts I was going to say it usually involves going up the butt. Yeah, luckily this time a live bird was smuggled in a potato chip tube like a Pringles can, but not up uh-huh. someone's butt. That would be hard to smuggle a uh, live bird up the butt, I've got to say. I don't know how you would survive. Maybe the bird had a straw breathing out of your butt. As long as the know. wings aren't open, right? Yeah, I guess. You're never getting them out with the wings open. Never. So, in this case, uh, a 23-year-old Malaysian man was caught smuggling a live bird inside of what looks like a Pringles can. Seaweed-flavored. I think that's the bigger story Mm -hmm. here is that there's seaweed-flavored Pringles that I've never tried. I know. You said this, and I was like, shit, I've never heard of seaweed-flavored Pringles. I've heard of the pizza, the sour cream, the honey mustard, and all the traditional, but, like, Jesus. Seaweed? Yeah, I mean, it might maybe it's one of those knockoff ones because they kind of blurred the uh, the the can a little bit, but it looks like a Pringles can. Oh, really? So there are companies knocking off the tube design for Pringles. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I don't think they. Well, I guess Lee's had that one. I think Pringles ripped that from tennis balls. Anyway. Uh, really, you're gonna say they they stole that from Wilson from those yeah. big old tent- Wilson. Oh, man. Wilson definitely uh, would, would have been the first. And then they're like, hey, we can put our chips in here. Or so- Spalden. <laughs> Sorry, Spalden. It wouldn't have been Spalden. I don't okay. know. We're not tennis professionals. Spalding we don't play Wilson, golf. We don't play them. tennis. We're slackers. We're going to have our tennis history podcast later. But uh, yeah, this, uh, that's tonight, 11 this, p.m. Be this there. This bird, it, it was stuffed in a Pringles can and put in the glove compartment of, Malaysia, of a Malaysian-registered car when it, they found it in Singapore 
and they're like we're snatching this bird and we're taking it away because it doesn't have the proper permit and they didn't even go into what kind of bird it was so i don't know if this was being smuggled for personal you know huh. or versus like so a lot of times with animals they're being sold on some sort of black market but i don't know if it was rare or anything you're more you know it's sitting see. in a bird cage on a desk of like whatever fucking military or police force fucking captain that snabbed that shit. They were like, here, here we go. <laughs> well, like, they put him in a cage. He looks like he's doing better than the Pringles can. He is in a cage. There's a photo of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's, there's a little kill him with that of officer. It. They were like, yeah, we, we took him out of the Pringle can. We gave him a cage. Look how much better he is. Yeah, he's doing well. <laughs> the bird's oh, doing man. well. 23-year-old man we can't, can't speak for these bastards yeah they <laughs> he disappeared but the birds living his life living the high life yep 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 man well we're gonna finish out the news we're talking about shack fu and if you don't know what shack fu is fuck you no i'm just kidding <laughs> i didn't know what shack fu was shack yeah, fu before then. this either <laughs> did you actually have a hands-on with shack fu at all i never got to play shack fu when i was younger but i had heard about it yeah, apparently it's a cult game, and it's probably worth a pretty penny, I'm going to say, right now. Oh, I wouldn't um, be surprised, yeah. Right? Yeah. It apparently came out, it's a 2D fighting game that came out on the Genesis and Super Nintendo um, in 1994. Later, it was ported over to Game Gear, Game Boy, um, and Amigo, whatever the fuck that is. I feel like I'm letting my nerd fans down by not knowing what Amiga is, but it's probably some really fourth-party platform. Uh, okay, it was uh, a family computer. Okay, yeah, it's like per- first personal computer gaming. A PC alternative, yeah. Um, but yeah, basically it was an, a fighting game featuring Shaquille O'Neal. Oh yeah. Practicing the deadly art of Shaq-Fu. <laughs> yeah, practicing the, the deadly art, as we all know, Shaq-Fu. And uh, it, it featured generally five characters, but that's the best thing about the, the revamp of it right now is coming back out. Um, on PC and PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Now, it's got some DLC. And it, it, I've got to say, the graphics look great, too, compared to what the old Shaq Fu looks like. It's reported over. It's uh, 3D. Definitely looking updated. Pr- looking updated and colorful. And uh, one of the best parts is one of the characters. You know, there's not, not just five characters anymore. One of the characters in the DLC is uh, Dirty Berry. A.K.A. Uh, Barack Obama. Ah, uh, okay. Ooh, and also a Kanye West character, which is pretty cool. But uh, he called Kanye. <laughs> Kanye. Oh man, he has an attack that's featured called the uh, Barack and Rolla. <laughs> okay. I couldn't help but appreciate that. Um, Kanye is uh, pretty dope. There's some trophies: uh, Barack Fu and Death of Pablo. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah, 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 you get the trophy with yeah, Brock Fu and the death of Pablo. Um, it looks pretty dope, man. I'm interested to see it, and uh, we might have to pick this up and give it a hands-on t- uh, review from American I, Slagger when it comes out. I feel out. like we might. <laughs> I really do. Like, I just, this ridiculousness of it is, like, reminding me of, like, um, Saints Row or uh, what was that other superhero one we used to play way back in the day? Where you could like pick up cars and throw them. Uh, oh, uh, it was like Justice League or something. No, no not Justice League. Uh, shit, it's gonna bug me so bad. It was. It was like Marvel uh, Heroes Online you, or something. No, no, no. You could shoot. It was very cartoony. Shit. Borderlands. No, really bad air stale right here. My bad about that. I can't. If you remember know what we're talking about? Please feel free to chime in on the American. Side There's like Facebook. two or three of them. Yeah, they've given them away with games with gold. Uh, we'll be sure to post this article up on the uh, Facebook yeah. as well. Either so way, Shaq Fu, be on Shaq the lookout Fu. for Shaq Fu, because that's looking like it's going to be the the game of the year. It's I'm the next bullshit. crab fight, people. So now we uh, want to get into one of our favorite parts of the show, our, our funny clip of the week. And this one's really funny. Uh, Matt, I know you've been excited for Jurassic Park. Oh, man, I cannot shut up about it. I am way too hyped about Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic World 2, more specifically, and uh, the Jurassic Park game that's coming out. It's more like a Sims, and you build the park. Shit goes where I, you got to take care of it. All, all kinds of fun stuff. But, uh, yeah, so I'm real hyped about it. This clip just fits hand-in-hand hand with my excitement. If you've used the Snapchat uh, app in the past like week or two, you've noticed that you can add dinosaurs into your Snapchat videos. 
They kind of oh, walk cool. around like AR augmented reality video. And in this case, we have a dad blowing out his birthday candles that just turns into a lewd act. <laughs> Taking something family friendly and turning it into an X-rated uh, fucking video. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it right there right now. Uh, if you if you are a Patreon slacker, uh, you'll be able to view the video on the live, on the uh, video version of this episode on our Patreon. And, oh, God. <laughs> he's just, this dad is just blowing right into the asshole of this T-Rex. And the T-Rex just, seems to like it. I'm, I'm going to put that out there. He's eating that T-Rex booty like it's his birthday cake. Like it's I'm groceries. Sure. Oh so, man! So uh, hey, yeah, Dad, it, what's going on? <laughs> we're gonna be ah. posting this up on the Facebook page on Wednesday, like we do every Wednesday with our funny clip. And if you want to see it as part of the live show video, please head over to the Patreon. Hell yeah! Check it out. And uh, now we're gonna get into Xbox gaming and the uh, wheel weird. But before we do that, we've got a promo for Hop Nation. USA. Do you like craft beer? Uh huh. Do you like an unending wealth of puns? Uh huh. What about four hour lectures on the ethics of cryptocurrency usage in third world nations? No! Oh, right. But do you still want craft beer reviews and comedy, right? Uh huh. Then listen to Hop Nation USA, a craft beer podcast. Available on iTunes, Podbean, Google Music Play, and Stitcher. Are you shitting me? No, I'm not. Just listen to the podcast. Top Nation USA. Where all fine podcasts are sold. Game We are back talking some video games. I uh, I wanted to, uh, I guess, off the top, just talk about a game that I picked up for, I think it was like 20 bucks on the Xbox store, uh, Cuphead. And I might be a little late to the party on this one. I've seen you playing it. I got no idea what this game's about. <laughs> it's a it's based on like 1940s animation, so it looks kind of Mickey Mousey, you know? Okay. And you basically are collecting souls uh in your to clear your debt for the devil because you like played at his casino and he and you lost and now he owns your souls and he's like oh collect my debts and you'll uh be free so you're going around doing all these boss battles and speed runs through levels a little darker of a story than I was expecting from the imagery of Cuphead. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, it's, like, definitely cartoony. And, yeah, but the story, I guess, is a little dark in a way. Yeah. You, yeah. It's all boss battles. It's really difficult, too. Okay. That's the thing is, this is a very, very difficult game. It took so it's a battling system, like, uh, type deal, or is... No, like, just, wh- like... What's the engine like? It's like a shooter, like a platform shooter kind of thing. Oh, okay. Like, if Mario had, like, a... Uh, uh, like laser beam or something, you know. Oh, it's, so it's a platformer for sure. That. Yeah, but there's a lot of just straight up boss battles, where you'll like fight oh, okay. these like larger enemies that kind of shape shift and like take a little while to beat. I think on average I beat the bosses in like two minutes, but I'll spend like 25 tries trying to beat that boss. Huh. Cause you Damn, have to, so you're yeah. like figuring out their moves and shit like that. It's really yeah. cool. It's uh, it's a decent game to pick up if you see it on sale. I would say give it a whirl. It, hmm, and it's uh, you out. can play two player as well. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, it's always fun when you can bring a friend in and uh, do that co-op. I would almost think it would make it a little easier because doing it one player is really tough. Really tough. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Some games are like that, man. You need that friend to help out and fucking Seriously. <laughs> kill this piece of shit boss. One of the other things we've been really excited about, Bethesda released a uh, please wait image on all their social media, kind of hinting at something in a Fallout graphic, and uh, me and you were pumped immediately. We were stoked. Uh, We were like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, the next day they released this preview for a game called Fallout 76. And uh, we're pretty stoked about it. We're pretty hyped, but... um, 
in another hand, we were worried about where this is going as a Fallout game. It, it seems that it's going to be a lot different than any other Fallout game we've played before. Yeah, it, it it's rumored to be more like Ark or um. Maybe I'm seeing like more like their Elder Rust. Scroll series, was like one online thing too. That was mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, true. Rust Online was ma was mentioned that it's going to be like that, but I'm still I can't help but go to like how they did with the Skyrim series of the Elder Scrolls Online. I'm a right. little worried, you know. I'm hoping it's nothing like that, and um, you know, hopefully there is a great multiplayer element to Fallout added with still, you know, preserving the main elements that we love from the series. You know, me and you have played it since Fallout Three way back a decade. We're talking. We've been fans of this, you know, series. Yeah, if it ends up being more like an arc sort of thing where you can go and claim a base and and kind of make different traps like you were able to do in Fallout mm. 4, maybe, that might be an interesting way to go about it, along with, like, throwing some quests in there that you can do with friends. That That's something I would really look forward to in, like, a multiplayer Fallout, which is a really odd thing to say in itself because one of the big elements of Fallout is the solo play, the fact that you feel very yes. alone in this very, in very apocalyptic setting, you know? Yeah, and you can almost say, like, that's the whole point of the game is, like, that feeling of, like, celerity is, like, you're just, you're, you're, you're on your own. So what, I'm in the apocalypse now and, uh, the fucking, ever there's, like, 80 people in the room, you know? Yeah. All just yeah. shooting at yeah. each other. Yeah, and it becomes more like a pub match almost. It's like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, so is it going to be more like a PUBG Fortnite kind of thing? Is it going to be more like Ark or Rust or something along those lines? Well, we'll see what they end you know, up doing with it. We're, we're excited yeah. to see either way. Yeah, time will tell. You know, we'll see how they, they really do, like choose to progress this game and... Uh, you know what the engine does either way i'm sure we'll pick it up we'll play it we'll see how it goes and if you're and, uh, a true nerd you can go and look into the history of vault 76 and uh yeah kind of dig into more of that as to what because they're they're pretty true to their lore whenever they create something yeah they're really good about their storylines there's a lot of like, hints in the trailer along with like just the history about vault 76 mm. in other games that have been released so you can check out a lot of that i was gonna say i wouldn't be surprised if like in almost all the fallouts there's mentions and little pieces of the storyline already for fall for the you know the bunker 76 yep you know i'm, I'm sure they're already the way they work psh. They're, they're great about that, man. That's what I appreciated the most when I first picked out Fallout 3 is, like, the little details to the hidden things of the story and, you know, how they even hid items in the game. It's just, it's unlike any other gaming. I recently started playing Fallout 3 again, actually. Ah, oh, such a classic, yep. man. Ah, oh, such a fucking classic. Uh, another game we're looking forward to coming out? Definitely me. I've been pumping the shit out of this Looks Jurassic awesome. World evolution and uh you know this is going out to the people maybe you were a fan of operation genesis that was a uh, another game that's very like this it's a sim style jurassic park game where you're setting up you know it's like roller coaster ty tycoon you're setting up a, a park it's a business simulation game and uh you're setting up the park with the dinosaurs and you're trying to advance the dna sequences of the dinosaurs maybe you you know uh make your own dinosaurs by breeding and shit and uh we all know, you know how that goes. Yeah, right? And, uh, you know, obviously shit goes wrong in the park, power outages and all that fun shit, so you're you're left to maintain everything. And there's going to be a bunch of different uh, gameplay modes, apparently. Um, there might be eventually a multiplayer, but uh, career mode's going to be the main highlight where, you know, obviously you're, you're setting up your park and doing all the deeds as a manager and owner of the park. And, That's neat. Uh, it's like yeah, Kerbal Space Program for Dinosaurs. Oh man, I'm so pumped! I'm so pumped! I'm gonna. The first thing I'm gonna do is build a park with no fences, so that the T-Rex can go out and eat everybody. <laughs> it's like build in Roller Coaster Tycoon, where you would build just the roller coaster and fling everyone off. Yeah, man, hell yeah, yeah. Like you didn't finish the track and it was just fly <laughs> into the water. God. Now the game is scheduled to release on June twelfth. And uh, so that's right around the corner. If you're downloading this, it's in a day or two from the release. And it will be on uh, Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One if you're uh, looking to get down on the dinosaur fun, like I am. And uh, check it out, Jurassic World Evolution. It's going to be a great game. And uh, if you're a fan of the series like I am, I'm sure you'll get a kick out of it. 
Another game that we are hyped to find out more about as they keep releasing more information is Red Dead Redemption 2. This has been a long time coming. Yeah, which is unlike the series. Usually, like, uh, Red Dead, like, last time they released, they put an announcement up and uh, they were out within a year. Now it seems like they're taking their time with this game, which we don't mind if they're going to make a perfected model. The scheduled release date is October 26th of this year. Okay. And they've released uh, their different special editions, ultimate editions, and collector boxes, along with what you can get if you pre-order the game, either digitally or in disc form. Yeah. And there's a lot like the, that they're getting. A lot, right? right? Yeah. With the any sort of pre-order, you get the War Horse and Outlaw Survival Kit, which contains a bunch of supplies, uh, you know, stuff to refl- replenish your health and stuff. With digital pre-order bonuses, you get cash for in the story mode of Red Dead Redemption 2, and you also get a treasure map that uh, allows you access to different uh, treasures around the game. And also, I, they have special edition and a collector's edition. The special edition gives you a physical treasure map and a bunch of DLC, including bank robbery missions, gang hideout map, um, a special dappled black thoroughbred, in case you want a badass uh, horse to ride around on. Cool. Quite a few like different outfits and discounts and whatnot. But man, that ultimate edition, it's going to run you about 260 bucks. Ooh. It's... Uh, Man, it's crazy. Or no, 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 I'm sorry, not the Ultimate Edition. The Ultimate Edition probably will be a little cheaper. That one only gives you a physical map as well and all the DLCs. It's the Collector's Box we're talking about, which is crazy. Me and you were on over this before the uh, show. And uh, it's, it comes in this gorgeous red lock box with uh, you know a metal finish over it. It comes with the physical treasure map that all the other game editions come with. But it also has a pin set playing cards, a six-shooter bandana, looks badass, collectible challenge coin, which is housed in this awesome fucking plexiglass holder, um, 12 cigarette cards, and a double-sided puzzle. So it's like a, a bunch of little like game knacks that are just really cool. Um, but again, if you're willing to pay that 260 would be pretty cool. They would be. They would be cool because they look like old-timey Wild West and the playing pins. cards. I would get a kick and out of the pins. Yeah, right. Yeah, the coin's got me, I've got to say. That coin is looking pretty badass. Right. But 260 I don't think I'm going to spend it. I think I'm going to get the regular edition. I guess the yeah. ultimate edition is uh, $99. I think. Okay. And, that, yeah, that one includes a whole bunch of uh, outfits, the thoroughbred, a bunch of themes and weapons. I mean, it might be worth it, you know, if you're really one of those guys that wants to get ahead in the game real quick. Right helps you rank up quicker and all that so it's it's crazy how much they're giving away with this it, it shows that they're trying to hype it up um which you know a lot of, a lot of people are looking forward to it anyway i don't know if it needs that much i think yeah yeah i think people are just gonna be diving into red dead i know we are and uh we're stoked for it we tried to play the multiplayer on red dead one and it was all haywire so oh, yeah we're, we're looking jank. forward to this shit we want to wreck the wild west together and uh, take care of them bad guys. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. So now some games that you can play currently, if you have an Xbox Live membership, are the Games with Gold for June that Xbox is just giving away. They're just giving this shit away, people. Download it. It's for free. You pay that gold fee every month. Some of them are pretty decent, I've yeah, got to say. You might have fun actually playing them. You might just be an achievement hunter like I am, but uh, there's some decent ones uh, this month. We have, first off, Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia, which is an Xbox One game, and it's available for all of June from the 1st to the 30th. And this is one of those offshoot uh, Assassin's Creed games, where it's like a side-scrolling platformer kind of thing. It's still fun. I got a chance to play it for a little bit. Yeah, it's a lot different, and it's probably the eighth Assassin's Creed to be given away for games for gold. Yeah, um, they've been giving away a but, lot. But uh, it's definitely worthy of checking out. And I didn't get a hands-on with it. I, I've got it in my queue to download. 
So I'll definitely be checking it out. But I, I enjoyed the last uh, Assassin's Creed they gave away. So yeah, it's it's a fun one to just kind of like screw around on. Yeah, hell yeah. You don't have to be as invested as like uh, one of the actual Assassin's Creed games, like the uh, British one that they had just given out to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was more of a true Assassin's Creed storyline where you had to go through and really, you know, it's the open world. Yep. Their the next game they gave away was pretty fun and another like careless enjoyment game i feel like you could say right the sonic and all stars racing transformed <laughs> yeah it's uh one of those mario kart style uh offshoot games but this time it's sonic and like other ones like uh, i think like a wii character or something now fuck no I was, I was playing it for a little bit it's it's pretty fun uh if you have like someone to play it with or you want to race online i would say it's it's a good one for that i played as knuckles when I was racing. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know who I'd choose. I'd probably choose Sonic. Honestly, Sonic or but... Tails, maybe? Yeah, Tails has always been the, like the go-to, I feel like. The old days like of waking up and that would be playing before you go to school. Yeah. On it, like cartoons. You remember that? S- Sonic Adventures. Man, those were the days. <laughs> we got a couple other games coming up at the uh, end of the month that I'm looking forward to one of them especially um but first we got Smite Gold I'm not I'm not exactly familiar with this at all it's well the game is Smite and it's the gold bundle so I'm not really oh. I, it, it's like a hundred dollar Smite bundle um, huh which maybe I'm guessing it gives you some sort of in-game credits to you sort of Smite because Smite is another one of those like massive multiplayer online kind of games oh okay okay where okay you can run around and sort of like the Marvel heroes or and, and like those yeah sort of those free to games. play but you got to pay to play at the same time yes I don't know some people seem to enjoy some of those yeah. types of games though. we've tried a few and uh, you know some of them are fun some of them are just repetitive but you know whatever yeah. you like you know yeah I'd say give it a try since they're at least giving you a hundred dollar credit in it. Right? Yeah, fuck, why not? The next game coming that's available June 16th to 30th is uh, Lego Indiana Jones 2. And I'm actually pretty excited about this because they don't make enough Indiana Jones games. What the fuck? Like, I want to play more yeah. Indiana Jones games. Lego Lego's always a lot of fun, too. Yeah, man. And I feel like Indiana Jones is a character that's just... You don't see enough of in the video gaming world. There was one Indiana Jones real game, like, back in the day, and it was fun as shit. They need to redo it. Yeah, Lego probably doesn't do it the full justice that an actual Indiana Jones game could have. But it'll, hey, it's better than nothing. I'm going to check it out. I'm pretty excited about it. You know, it might be a little kitty, but hey, it might be a little fun at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I always had fun with the Star Wars Legos games. Yeah, yeah, those were wild. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, both games, uh, Smite with the Gold Bundle and Indiana Jones will be available the 16th of June. So check those out when they come out. And otherwise, until na- then, check out Assassin's Creed Chronicles Russia and Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed, which are available right now. All right, and we're about to move on to the Wheel of Weird. But before we do that, we're going to hear something from the So It Is Told podcast. What it is, everyone. I'm Jacob Meza, the host of the podcast, So It Is Told. Each week, I read a new folk tale or fairy tale with a local comedian and or world traveler. Like your drunk grandma reading a bedtime story, their suspense. Oh my god, they are cannibals! Magic. (laughs) And all-around madness. They're birthing hips! Available on any mainstream podcast directory. Fresh. (laughs) That's really fucking weird. <laughs> and we are ba- 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 back with the Wheel of Weird. And uh, shit's about to get weird with that. As it always does, uh, the way this works, we dive headfirst into the wiki unusual pages to find a person, a place, and a thing. And we give the Wheel of Weird a spin, and it determines what we're talking about. So Matt, you got you got the wheel ready and prepped, I'm guessing. Oh, she's spinning right now as we speak. We'll see where she brings us. To let she's you know what it could wheel. possibly land on. For our person, we have Arthur McMurrow Cavanaugh. For place, we have Nitwit Ridge. And for thing, we have the Truman Show delusion. We'll see Truman what we Show delusion. 
We all know the Truman Show. We had... That's funny. We landed on things. So, Truman Show delusion. It is. All right. The Truman Show delusion. We all know the Truman Show. The, uh, the movie from 2008, uh, I believe. Or, I'm sorry, from 1998, where uh, <laughs> Jim Carrey played Jim Carrey. Truman Burbank, a man who discovered he was living in a constructed reality televised around the clock. And since he was in the womb, his entire life had been televised, if, if you have not you know, seen the movie before. And this syndrome uh, stems from something just like that. People believing that everything around them is uh, an elaborately orchestrated play. That's so crazy to think about. You think your whole life is just some master crafted, like, theatric production that, like, so many people are, like, involved in. <laughs> yeah, and there have been over uh, 40 recorded instances of people suffering Truman Show delusion in the U.S. and the U.K. and elsewhere, but it seems like U.S. and U.K. are the main places that happen. I wonder if it happened after the movie, or if it's been going on and that's where the movie came from, you know? That's, uh, you know, it, it wasn't coined as a term until 2008, um, but huh. the movie came out in 1998, so one could expect. Um, the concept uh. actually goes back a little bit uh, before, it was because it was on a Twilight Zone episode in 1989. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and actually, even in uh, the 1980s incarnation, Special Service, which the protagonist discovered a camera in his bathroom mirror, this man soon learns that his life is being broadcast. So I guess it was a Twilight Zone episode even before that. That's crazy. Jesus, there are, there's also been a number of short stories, I, I believe, I guess, that have been written about the Please. same subject. So the concept goes back a while, you know, of everything around you being orchestrated. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just a big production. Man. We'll tell That's you wild. right now, if you're listening to us, we're not being paid at all to... <laughs> <laughs> to to do this and set up your life so if we can help yeah. break that delusion for you uh we're, we're not a part of it and we're not saying yeah. that because we're a part of it we're actually just not a part of <laughs> it oh you're diving into a wormhole there oh, man. man i think i just screwed it up <laughs> we're not part of it <laughs> so we'll be, we'll post up uh the link to the wikipedia article for the truman show delusion on our facebook page too so you can read a little bit more about it there's some interesting cases there for sure Oh, man. Yeah, check it out. That is weird as shit. I think that's a perfect spot to end this episode at. And uh, thank you so much for everybody tuning in. And, uh, hey, stop by the Facebook page, American Slacker Podcast. You'll find us there. You'll also find an American Slackers group where there's a ton of slackers just like you to talk a bunch of cool shit with. And also stop by the Instagram, American Slacker Podcast. You'll find us there. The art for each and every episode and a bunch of other cool images to melt your fucking eyeballs. And uh, don't forget the main website, uh, AmericanSlackerPodcast.com, ASPodcast.com. You'll find us there. You can also find us over on Twitter and Reddit at A-M-E-R-S-L-K-R Podcast. And all of our stuff is going up on YouTube. We're adding more and more to that. Uh, probably the Instagram pre-show. We'll, we'll be putting up on there sooner rather than later. Um, we also want to let you know you can rate us and review us on iTunes. We always appreciate five stars. And please tell a friend about the show. That's a great way to spread the uh, slackerness. And big thank you to anyone on Instagram Live that was watching. We had uh, Airborne pop in for a minute, uh, Fit Farm podcast, uh, Killer Kids podcast. So we, we really oh, appreciate yeah. anyone watching. If you want to send us an email, American Slacker Podcast at gmail.com, we will get back to you right away. And uh, also, stop by the Spotify playlist, American Slacker Podcast. You'll find our playlist with each and every artist we've had on the show and featured their music. And please, if you want to help the show out, head over to our Patreon account where you can uh, sponsor us at different levels and receive rewards in return for that sponsorship. Uh, some shout outs that we have to do for people who are supporting the show Dave Gunn, big thank you to you Seth Anders, another big thank you going out uh, Kyle Nolan Bradford from the Crime Roulette Podcast, thank you guys and Aaron W. from the SNIM Podcast, thank you so much thank you guys so much you're uh, 
contributions go a long way to helping the show. And uh, we're forever grateful to you. Please also visit our shop, American Slacker Podcast.bigcartel.com. We've been working on some new designs of shirts that you can go over there and buy. Uh, all the shipping is included in the price that you see there. So if you like anything, don't hesitate to add that to your cart. Don't forget to check us out on a personal level. You can get at me on Instagram at MWG Media and on Xbox Live at Natty G from HP. And I'm on both Instagram and Xbox at Landers the Plane. Alrighty, people. We love every one of you. Thank you for tuning in to the live stream, to the Patreon feed, whatever you are seeing or hearing us on. Wherever you're we getting fucking us. love you and appreciate the shit out of you. And uh, until episode 100. That's it. There you go.